Hey there, YouTube land. And do you remember back in the day when you first kind of started collecting? If you were, uh, say you're 30 or so or, or over, or even my age, uh, usually, well, if you started with VHS especially, you probably were getting those clamshell anchor bay cases. If you started with DVD, you were probably getting a lot of the, the anchor bay stuff, the Phantasm, the Hammer, and all those different editions of Evil Dead and stuff like that. And I used to have a lot of that. I uh, got a smaller Anchor Bay collection right now. But uh, it's a collection I'm proud of because it really goes to the roots of what I, what I watched and what I collected. And it kind of gives you... When you get a collection of anything, uh, especially your earlier collection, you'll notice that it kind of helps to find the way that you really collect. I mean, before you started getting the uh, special editions and there was all these cool-ass posters and stuff coming out with with these amazing mega editions that you're grabbing up left and right because there's just so much genre stuff, you kind of looked at stuff that you really, really wanted. It was earlier time for collecting. So you just went out and you got stuff that just grabbed you. And some, sometimes you found stuff that uh, that you didn't remember uh, watching just because the cover was cool or something like that. and Or it was back in the day and you got it and it was just incredible. So what I thought I'd do is I'd go through my old my new Anchor Bay stuff. I don't have a lot of new or Anchor Bay stuff, but I do have a couple things. So I'll probably do those first and then we'll go into the older stuff. And uh, we'll talk about them as we go along. And... Uh, I'll let you know why I have these movies, what they mean to me, and uh, how it like kind of relates to me and my collection and my overall feelings on uh, certain films. So uh, let's start it up with, uh, I want to start with the newer ones, so let's go with the new ones first. Some of these I bought at the time... Uh, well, one of these I bought because I was really interested in seeing the film. Uh, a couple of these I bought because, well, they were Anchor Bay and got them for a good deal. Or in one in one case, my dad actually just gave it to me. And I, uh, it gives you a good feeling. Anchor Bay always gave me a good feeling. Before their Screen Factory and Arrow, Anchor Bay was kind of what you went to to, to uh, get really good quality genre stuff. You get some stuff from MGM every once in a while, but it'll be pretty uh, featureless. And even a lot of the anchor base stuff would be featureless, but they would have usually something, or there'd be something different with the covers that you'd really enjoy. There'd be like an insert of some sort, uh, or some write up, or even a, just a little uh, booklet. It just made them seem special because they would do stuff that uh, at the time there was no nobody else doing. Of course, Anchor Bay got Blue Underground, which should be got a, a bunch of other stuff, but uh, let's. Let's just get into, let's get straight to it. The last Anchor Bay movie that I picked up, and it had been a long time since I picked up an Anchor Bay movie, was a movie that I really enjoyed, and that is The Battery. Uh, at this point, this is one of my favorite movies of the year, and uh, I knew nothing about this movie when I picked it up. I just loved the cover of it. It was around the Halloween time, and I was doing a lot of Halloween films. Actually, I think it was just like about a week or so before the October month. I was doing a whole bunch of these. I did. I bought this one and Prom Night the same day. And I couldn't choose between the two at the time. I really knew I wanted Prom Night. And I kind of really, really wanted to see this. I'm really glad I picked this up. It's a fantastic one. And uh, just to show Anchor Bay still has features, this one has an actual 90-minute documentary on it. And it's a really good documentary. The Battery is one that I will go back to and watch over and over again because it's just a really good film. I don't know if I've ever watched this. My dad gave it to me. It had a slip cover, and I'm all about the slip cover. It was Anchor Bay, and it's part of a franchise that I really enjoy. Will I enjoy this movie? Let's see. I don't know. If it's really cheesy and the girls are cute, maybe, but uh, was I don't expect this to be a good film. Uh, and it's The Howling Reborn. Everybody knows that the Howling movies got pretty much worse and worse as he went along. It's kind of like the Hellraiser films. But, uh, 
Halloween Reborn with this cover. Even if the movie was crap, it was free, it was given to me. And uh, Lindsay Shaw. Is that the girl from uh, Pretty Little Liars? And she's acting uh, that kid show. Uh, like Ned's Declassified School Guide or something like that. My kids uh, watch that. But it looks like her. If you see the actress in the red, she really looks like the uh, girl that plays the lesbian friend on uh, Pretty Little Liars. Another classic I picked up, and uh, I'm a big fan of Soska Sisters. Really enjoy their stuff, and uh, everybody probably has this one. And it's uh, American Mary. But you can show them, tell them, kind of show them the new ones first so that I can get into the cooler old ones after. So we can really talk about those. One of the few remakes that I really, really enjoyed uh, of, of the newer remakes Silent Night amazed at how much fun I have with this movie. Uh, was there any huge explanation for the killer? No, it didn't really need it. It was just kind of fun. The deaths in this are hilarious. I love the uh, the kid death at the beginning of the film. It's ballsy and funny as hell. Next couple are uh, some actual bigger editions. I probably could have left them for last, or one of them is anyway. But uh, let's go through them. One of my uh, favorite uh, movies when I was growing up, like as in, as in gore movies go, was done by Peter Jackson. And it was a movie called Bad Taste. The Bad Taste actually has Peter Jackson acting in it. It's one of the movies that when he was early on in his career, he always wanted to do a sequel to. It's kind of like gore fest. It's uh, aliens. It's really cheesy. If you've seen Bad Taste, you know what I'm talking about. It's really a, a good film to pick up. And I've been looking for it for ages. And I had this like really cheap copy of it. But I'd always wanted to get that limited edition Anchor Bay one. Uh, it had like an extra disc. And you know, not a lot it was on that extra disc. But it was a really hard to get rare kind of like limited edition. And I walked into a store. It was actually a gaming store. Because uh, I couldn't believe I found this one for like, I think it was three bucks or something like that. It was actually the limited edition of Bad Taste. I gotta open this up because it's really cool. Gotta make sure there's nothing on there you can't see. No, okay, no nudity because the violence doesn't matter in here, but apparently. Two disc, disc one and disc two, just really, really cool. Uh, the, the Bastards Have Landed edition. It's uh, number 1,429 of 50,000. And that's the probably the one of the only limited editions I have of of a uh, screen factory, uh, the original screen factory, Anchor Bay. Just a really fun movie and one that I always enjoy. So it's one I like to go back to every once in a while. I don't like a lot of gore festy type movies, but that one kind of does something. It has something for me. Uh, this one here is by one of my favorite directors and uh, this controversial guy. Uh, this is a great edition. It's a fantastic documentary on this. Uh, two cuts of the film. And uh, I like the film. It's not for everybody, but uh, I thought it was great. It had a great cast. And it's the uh, kind of the spy thriller, uh, The Osterman Weekend. By, uh, it's a Sam Peckinpah commemorative two-disc edition. Uh, this one here, well, the stars are incredible. I mean, Rucker Howard, Dennis Hopper. Burt Lancaster, Craig T. Nelson, John Hurt, just had an incredible, incredible cast in this movie. Uh, Peck and Pop, of course, was, a, uh, you know, uh, did some pretty violent stuff, but uh, it wouldn't be considered violent. Maybe, yeah, it would still be considered violent by today's standards. And it's, if you watch Monty Python, they do this skit of uh, Sam Peck and Pop's Salad Days, where basically it's uh, kind of a 20s one of those uh, really polite English movies where they're playing piano on the lawn and everybody's playing cricket and stuff like that. And they're kind of like lampooning Sam Peckinpah's films and the piano comes down and takes off the hands of the guy and the cricket ball goes and like 
takes the, somebody's eye out. It's just really funny. But if you really like uh, Sam Peckinpah's films, uh, this really is a great addition to get. The Ashman Weekend is a real fun film. And it's a Robert Ludlum film. I grew up reading the Robert Ludlum books. They're extremely fun and overly complex sometimes. There's a guy that did the Bourne but books, the Bourne and Denny and all those. Uh, but I was a really, really huge Robert Ludlum fan. I read everything that he uh, did up to the point when, well, I got out of college, basically. And I stopped reading as much as I should. Next up is one that my dad gave me. Uh, I couldn't believe that I found this. It's one of the uh, Lucio Fulci collections, you know, the big box ones that they put out. And uh, there's only one problem. And uh, thanks to Faligar, he helped solve this problem, actually. It's a Lucio Fulci collection, volume two, Manhattan Baby and the New York Ripper. And I was, like, so excited because I hadn't seen the Manhattan Baby in ages. And New York Ripper tended to be one of my favorite films that Fulci ever did. Um, now, Manhattan Baby is the one that had all features on it. New York Ripper had nothing. Uh, but I opened it up. And I guess it's good in a way. It had Manhattan Baby on one disc. And then it had the DVD Scream Factory edition of Life Force. Instead of uh, New York Ripper. So I actually kind of have Life Force, the DVD version anyway. From Screen Factory as well as Arrow. Um, and it had the. Uh, which is. Which is uh, doesn't exist anymore. Yep. Yeah. Manhattan Baby, kind of like your Cripper chapter thing. Now, I mentioned this in one of my videos. And uh, a good friend of mine, Sammy, Faligar 5 and 7, he actually went out and was really cool and sent me uh, the Blu ray, actually, of New York Ripper. Amazing print, guys. If you ever get the chance to get the, the Blu-ray of New York Ripper, I think it came out by Blue Underground. Uh, it's got some features too, I think. Awesome, awesome. I love that movie. <clears throat> Next up is a classic for me. It's one that I will watch every Christmas. I usually watch it with my kids because it's hilarious. It's actually two films. And I probably could just watch the second one and you guys know what I'm talking about now. But it's Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's the double feature, part one and part two. It's a two-disc set. Uh, there's an audio commentary on the first one. There's an audio commentary on the second one. And I uh, haven't really listened to either audio commentary. But I got to for the second one. Oh, my God. Silent Night, Deadly Night, part one and part two. Of course, unrated. <sighs> what do you say about this, these films? It's garbage day. I grew up watching this stuff. I mean... I remember back when this was a controversy. Um, I'm older than a lot of the YouTubers on here. Well, not a lot of them, but I'm older than like the, my younger brethren that uh, are uh, collecting. And uh, so I remember a lot of these movies from the theater. I remember being up in Ontario when uh, some of this stuff was coming out. And back in the day, the newspapers would have huge pages upon pages and pages of like posters. I would like cut them out and uh, my favorite one of all time was Happy Birthday to Me. I could not believe that when I saw the poster with the shish kebab uh, kind of like going into the guy's mouth. It was like, amazing. I thought it was incredible. I knew no, I had no idea what the movie was about. I just loved that poster. It made so much. I had it cut out and I, I think I went out and I bought like a couple extra papers because the uh, paper, uh, the uh, you know, we, we go in the, and like you put your quarter in at the time or, and you got the paper out. So I went and got a couple more just so I could cut some extras out in case I lost that one. Unfortunately, I don't have those anymore. But uh, I used to love the artwork. And I actually really like these films. I thought the first film was pretty damn good. Uh, Linnea Quigley actually has a small role in this. Uh, the movie itself worked really, really well. And the second one is, is a horribly acted film. And it should make you want to turn it off within the first five minutes, but you are transfixed and you cannot stop watching this. It is so freaking bad. Uh, plus you're getting all... If that didn't make it bad enough, you're seeing this horrible acting from part two and you're seeing all these scenes from part one, which really highlight the fact that part two has even worse acting. Uh, love this movie. Love the kills in these movies. Some people, you know didn't like him. Uh, Mickey Rooney didn't like him back in the day, and he ended up making the fifth one. But you know what? So, Silent Night, Daily Night, Part 1 and 2, just a fun one to have. Uh, 
if you like the uh, kind of the cheesier stuff, I'll be honest, I picked up this one because it was Anchor Bay, and I haven't got a chance around to watching it again yet, and I haven't seen this since, since probably just after it came out. It was a New World picture, so I knew I had to have it. And that is a DEFCON 4 defense condition. I remember the this the case like kind of like from uh back in the VHS days and I love the the look of it here but I cannot tell you what this movie's about right now. I really don't remember it. I know it's kind of a science fiction -y type film. Uh, I think it's kind of a World War 3 type type one. You, have you ever seen this one, huh? DEFCON 4 like World War 3 back from the 80s. Uh it actually has directed by Paul Donovan, uh, radiation, disease, cannibalism, group of sad sadistic survivalists. The astronauts find themselves in one final earthbound battle against time, contamination, and total nuclear annihilation. So typical 1980s uh, nuclear scare stuff. So fun stuff. Great cover. Here's a movie that I really didn't like very much when I first saw it. And it's eh, but it's also one of the most expensive anchor bays I got. And uh, I don't think I could ever give it up. It's a Friedkin film. Not one of my favorite Friedkin films. But uh, it had the original like artwork on the inside. It's The Guardian. I don't know why I didn't get into this one more. I just maybe I expected more out of it. And maybe I should rewatch it, but I haven't really watched this since the since the early DVD days. Uh, really love this movie. Well, not really loved it, but I love the idea of this movie and what was behind it. Uh, but for some reason, since I got it again, I haven't really checked it out that much. I like Carrie Lowell a lot, and uh, Danny Seagrove was in this, so it should be one that I rewatch. Probably should watch this for Halloween. This is my ne one of my next year Halloween watches for sure. I wanted to see this again. I remember being slightly disappointed in this one at the time, but uh, I held it up to a very high standard because it was William Friedkin, the guy that directed The Exorcist. And uh, I'm not sure if I thought there was enough nudity in it or something like that. Because, uh, you know, it's an exploitation film. Uh, another kind of newer one. I love this movie, and I don't know why it's the music, I think. I, uh, there's a song in it that, if I get it in my head, sing it for weeks. And just looking at this box cover, song's in my head right now. Dead and Breakfast. If you haven't seen this movie, really check it out. This is actually a really fun movie. And it's not your average typical zombie type film. It's got a really cool lenticular cover, which is probably the reason that I saw this movie in the first place. But I remember sitting down with my son to watch this movie for the first time. And we watched it. And we kept the the uh, menu playing because the music was playing. Got an extended version of one of the songs. Because uh, there's kind of a musical part to this. It has kind of a hillbilly type of rap to it. Uh, kind of rock, hillbilly rap, rap rock 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 rap type of thing it's really cool and uh yeah great cast but uh the music makes this movie you got to check it out or just at least go on youtube and google you know dead and breakfast songs it's incredible stuff uh i think it's uh i'm coming to kill you is one is the song that kind of like a uh zombie rap type thing it's really cool. This is one I bought for my better half. She's a huge David Bowie fan. And uh, this is a fantastic film. Actually, I think this one came out from Screen Factory as well. No, Screen Factory. Uh, Criterion. I think Criterion did a version of this one. It's out of print, though. It is out of print? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, both of these are out of print. This is the fairly expensive one now, I think. Well, I think so. Uh, and it's uh, The Man Who Fell to Earth. Uh, very different packaging. Uh, kind of a paper packaging. Kind of like the way that's done. Bowie. This is the two disc edition. Uh, it's got some great featurettes on it. Uh, attached for trailer. Let's just look at this one on the inside because it's one of those really cool ones. I love this picture here. Doesn't that mind you of like a Prism album? If you know the band Prism, which you probably don't. I was really big in the new wave and stuff like that when I was younger. 
new wave and punk and that. There's a booklet, of course, on the inside. Uh, feature presentation and bonus materials. And a movie. I mean, I bought this out of one of these secondhand shops. And the movie looked like it was never watched. Uh, really, literally looked like it hadn't been played. So I really liked having that one. I, I was looking at some that I really wanted. Like, uh, there's one an edition of a French film called, and uh, this is the name of the film, so I'm not swearing, called Besmois that I was going to pick up. But uh, I got this one for my uh, better half instead, and I think I made the right decision. Plus, Errol put out a good edition of that, which I'll grab down the road one of these days, because I'm just kind of interested in seeing what it's about. Uh, next up is one that I remember from my childhood. I remember having both these films, but you want to really remember, and uh, more so even than the TV series that I would follow these two films, was that I uh, watched, we were going to Ontario, and we were driving in a car. I was pretty young. I read voraciously. So uh, I had the novelization of the second movie on double feature here, and I was reading it in the car on the way up, and I can still to this day remember the novel, I can remember reading it, I remember when we'd stop in, uh, I think it was New Brunswick, and uh, I was just sitting in the back of the car that was sunny, and I didn't want to go out or anything, I just wanted to finish the novelization, and I think I finished it within like a day or so, and uh, we had a ways to go, and I just read it again like two other times on the way up. So, uh, it's a short little story. And it's the, uh, the Night Stalker, the Dammer Gavin classic, and the Night Stranger. The Night Stranger is a book that I read. So uh, I would really love to find that book again. Because uh, as a young kid, I read it and reread it. So uh, I don't even know who wrote it. But uh, the least novelization. But uh, really glad to have this one. I'd love to see this one get a Blu-ray edition. Uh, I love these movies. And I love the TV series as well. It is such a shame that the TV series had such a bad release with so many uh, faulty discs that were just faulty after faulty. I had so many faulty versions of the Night Stalker TV series that I basically ended up not getting it afterwards. And I'm just waiting for it to come out in a good edition. Uh, but the Night Stalker, the Night Strangler, Anchor Bay, uh, not a lot of features, just uh, the two films, uh, but incredible. Basically features to say the Night Stalker and the Night Strangler, two 70s classics, presented with state of picture and sound. See all the wrinkles of Kolchak's suit for the first time. So this was the ultimate in like, I guess high def if you want to call it back then. Uh, but I um, really love that. Oh, here's another newer one that I have because my better half and me saw this, and I won't say it's a first date because we weren't dating or anything, but we were friends. And uh, we uh, brought movies to the house for her to watch. And this newer one was because she said she liked cheesy horror and she liked cheesy wrestling horror stuff, like El Santo and stuff like that. So I was at the store, and uh, this is not the, that release. I actually lost that one, but this is I replaced it with this one here. Uh, WrestleManiac. Uh, it's a unique film, but I gotta be honest, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's not a good film. Uh, don't ever go and spend any real money in this. This is Rey Mysterio, as in the uncle Rey Mysterio, not Rey Mysterio Jr. from WWE, so don't get him them confused. It's really different. Um, basically, it's about, though there is a wrestler in this, uh, Leila Milani, who would go on to be in, a, I think she would go on to be in wrestling, and uh, I think she was in Dealer No Deal, like as one of those girls that held the suitcases. But a uh, very cheesy film about a... Uh, a wrestler that was like on some kind of experimental stuff or steroids, some type of thing, and he was crazy, and he actually ripped the face off of people. Uh, so they go to this like kind of like abandoned Mexican town where this legends happened, and uh, to film kind of a softcore, kind of a pornish type of film, and this luchador, what's his name again, El Mascarado, uh, the WrestleManiac. Is actually a, is still around, and uh, it's worth checking out. It really is. I believe you actually still remember the plot. Of course, I remember the plot. It was our first first house that we had a, a movie 
watching time together. I'm never going to forget that. Um, next up to Glassic. Uh, I have the Blu-rays of this. And I didn't upgrade until I bought the box set, the Blu-ray box set. I didn't go for the Anchor Bay other edition of this because I just really like this edition, and I still do. I would never give this one up, I don't think. It's just such a beautiful cover. It's a two-disc edition in their Divimax series. Uh, it's a Halloween H25, the uh, 25th anniversary edition. Just really cool. It had the Halloween Cut Above the Rest 87-minute uh, documentary. Uh, before the Halloween cut above the rest, it had been like a 30-minute, like, truncated version. And this, I think, was the first one that actually put the whole uh, documentary on there. Of course, we had the On Location 25 Years Later uh, with PJ Souls and Deborah Hill going to the Myers house. Just a lot of really great stuff. There's another commentary with uh, John Carpenter and Jane Lee Curtis and Deborah Hill. Of course, Deborah Hill, unfortunately, has passed away now. So it makes this one even more special. has a great big booklet in here. Incredible stuff. Uh, next up is uh, another, like, kind of a cool classic with Anton Differing. Uh, I got this one from my dad, and uh, it was uh, Cirques of Horrors. Just a really fun film. Uh, I liked it. There's a lot of uh, is it English, there's a lot of English actors in this one. Uh, Donald Pleasance does a, is in this, I think. Yeah, I think Donald Pleasance is in this one. And basically, it's about this uh, plastic surgeon played by Anton Differing. And he's a uh, he takes was it takes young women, kind of like that have been disfigured, and he makes them beautiful, and but he gets them to commit crimes. And uh, it doesn't always, well, obviously, there's going to be some person that doesn't want to commit the crimes. And the and the really cool thing is this looks it's a pretty beaten up case, but the uh, disc itself is like mint. And I always got to say I love these like lobby card things that they put in there. A lot of these have lobby card things. And yes, I am a big fan, you will know how big of a fan I am right now, of this film. Because I actually do have the original Sol and Idelian edition that Anchor Bay put out, the uncut and uncensored one. Uh, worth a bit of money now? Yeah, it is. Oh, would I get rid of it? No. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of the film. Uh, just, I'm, yes, I already have it on a double feature, but this is it on its own. I love the box art on this one. It's, you know, it's basically the same thing. They just redid it into a thing, but I, I just, it's a favorite of mine. It's like a, just a really fun movie. It's Silent and Deadly Night. The next three are from a series that I really love, and uh, you guys know that I love them. And it's a uh, phantasm. I got uh, the Anchor Bay collection right here. I love this edition. Uh, Don Coscarelli. There's some great features on here. Uh, we got a Phantasmagoria in 14. So again, it's a truncated 30 minute version. If you want to get the whole Phantasmagoria, which is an amazing over 90 minute documentary, you got to get that like a spear thing that's out there. Uh, there's an audio commentary on here, deleted scenes, behind the scenes, just a bunch of stuff. Fangoria TV commercials with Ang Angus Scrim, uh, Ang Angus Scrim convention appearances. You open it up and Freaking gorgeous. And just incredible. I love this one here. And uh, I've always been a fan of Phantasm. It's one of my favorite movies. I can't explain why people always ask me, why is this one of your favorite movies? It's just because it literally gives you the feeling of what it would be like to uh, have a nightmare, like to live it. And uh, having that, and it's from a director that until recently pretty much had complete control over a franchise and it had not been done before. Franchises that had been mined out for uh, different art directors and different artistic visions. Uh, Don Coscarelli had spent a lot of time keeping it and passing up a lot of money to uh, make sure that the vision that went out was his own. And of course, knowing that I had that, I had to have Phantasm Lords of the Dead. That's Phantasm 3. Uh, Phantasm 2 is not under, and with this it's with my Scream Factories because it was one of the first Scream Factories I bought. Uh, just some incredible stuff in here again. Just another cool lobby card uh, artwork. Some decent features on here. Again, 
commentary with A. Michael Baldwin and Ang Scrim, some behind the scenes stuff, uh, trailers, deleted scenes. <clears throat> Huge fan. I love the Yankee Bay collection. Of course, Phantasm Oblivion. That's the fourth one. And until re recently, it was the last one. Uh, we have, uh, again, Coscarelli, Reg Reggie Bannister, and Angus Scrim doing a commentary. There's behind the scenes the promo and English subtitles for the hearing impaired is actually a special feature at this point. Uh, again, I uh, love Anchor Bay, and this was a fantastic film. <clears throat> I got a few, after all, I guess. Uh, this is one that I used to watch back on CBC all the time. And at the time, I didn't know that the, uh, that the movie was made by one of my favorite directors. And that would be Bob Clark. Bob Clark made probably the film that defined me the most when I was growing up, and that was Black Christmas, the 1974 classic. It uh, starred Keir Julia, Olivia Hussey, uh, Margot Kidder, just uh, Art Hamilton, Art Hindle, uh, just an incredible film. And the, uh, the work that was done in the film, just the uh, cinematography, and just the way that it was shot, it was a movie that made me realize movies aren't just things on the screen, this real work that's going into the stuff. So, uh, that was a, it meant a lot to me. And this one, I watched it a lot. It's my favorite Sherlock Holmes uh, movie of all time. That's outside the canon. And it's uh, Christopher Plummer and James Mason. Of course, Donald Sutherland, Murder by the Creek. <clears throat> I love this movie. If you haven't seen it, really recommend it. A really good one. Jack the Ripper meets Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and Plummer does an incredible, incredible job of Sherlock Holmes. You only played Sherlock Holmes one more time, I think. It was in Silver Blaze. And there's a, again, this one has a book with kind of like a uh, Murder by the Creep poster in the middle of it. Really worth checking out. If you don't have this uh, movie, it's really worth getting. <clears throat> okay, more cheesy time. And one from my dad. My dad got me a few of these, actually. Uh, my dad used to uh, sell movies. I did, too. But he basically kept selling films for a nice while. like, uh, And uh, he had a great collection of uh, movies they would get. And whenever there'd be like some kind of cheesy horror or anchor-based stuff like that, he would always like uh, think of me first and kind of like put some stuff aside for me. And I really appreciated it and always got excited getting getting them. And this was one here. It's uh, Parasite with uh, Demi Moore, her first starring role. A uh, very cheesy, like, it's a science fiction monster type of film. I think this was done in 3D originally. Charles Band actually did this one. So you can tell how cheesy this is going to be. It's going to be pretty uh, innocent cheese for what it is. And uh, it's a fun little film. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think Stan Winston actually did the creature effects on this one here. So you know the creature is going to be good. Or as good as you could get for uh, Charles Band's uh, budget. Yeah, Charles Band's budget. Again, uh, I have House here, the uh, actual horror legacy slipcover edition with you know House on the inside. I did have House too, but uh, I think it was. I uh, actually I picked up House two at the same time that I picked up this one here, and uh, House was a. Uh, House films are a favorite of, uh, of my friend TJ's, of Joe's. So, it was around the time, I think his birthday was coming up, and it was last year, I think. And I, one of the movies that I sent him was House 2, because I knew that he collected Anchor Bay like I did, and that was a really important movie to him. So, I don't have House 2 anymore, but I had it for like five minutes. But I'll, I'll end these days I get it again. Uh, actually, I can. It's down to the, uh, to the place. Not with the Horror Legacy series, but I just wanted to have one of these in my collection. Uh, it was kind of a, I think it was a Canadian slipcover thing that they did. Uh, great features on this one. Uh, Steve Miner, of course, directed this, and more more than likely, yeah, I don't commentary with Miner, because he'll talk about this. He won't talk about his Friday 13th movies, but he'll talk about House. Uh, William Katz in this one, of course, from Great American Hero. I had a lot of fun with this movie. And uh, it's just, it's my uh, favorite of the House movies, if you don't include the horror show. I really like the horror show, though. One that everybody had in one edition or another from Anchor Bay is the Evil Dead films. And this is uh, Evil Dead 2. 
Dead by Dawn. Uh, basically, Kiss Your Nerves Goodbye. There's been a million different editions of this one out. I just like this one. It had the widescreen and full frame edition. There's a great uh, commentary on there with Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, and Scott Spiegel. Scott Spiegel, you guys will probably remember, as the guy that directed the classic uh, film Intruder. Intruder is like a movie of, of spider film, a slasher spider film with this... Uh, all these people are caught inside of a, uh, a, a nighttime supermarket and they're getting killed off. I love that movie. If there's a Blu-ray out there, I don't have it. wish I did. But uh, unfortunately, I don't yet. Uh, there's a feature right on here. There's a preview of the video game that was that back at the time. Evil Dead, Hail to the King. Uh, some really cool stuff. <clears throat> I have the Blu-ray of Hellraiser. The Anchor Bay. I just didn't do any of my Blu-ray stuff on here. But I do have the DVD edition of my favorite Hellraiser movie, which is Hellbound Hellraiser 2. This is my favorite of the entire Hellraiser franchise, even above the first one. Uh, Tony Randall did a great job in directing this one here. Uh, the villains are even better than the first one. Dr. Dr. Chenard is incredible. Um, if her mother could get more evil than this, I'm not sure, but she does. And uh, got we got a commentary with uh, Tony Randall, Ashley Lawrence, and Peter Atkins. There's a cool featurette on this as well. Again, uh, how about Howard's Attitude? I always love this one. I actually remember uh, when the store was closing down, and he had a bunch of VHS in there. It was like uh, I was on limited resources at the time, but I remember I picked up a. Uh, oh God. Hellraiser, I picked up Hellraiser 2, I picked up uh, Die, Die My Darling, it was like a Hammer film or something like that, uh, with uh, Stephanie Stephanie Powers, one of her only nude scenes, I think, uh, one that I really love. Next up is my favorite edition of this film, it hasn't been beaten, and uh, I watch this one a lot, I watch the special features on this one a lot, because they were really good, and it's uh, Hills of Eyes, the special... Uh, Two disc edition. It's the only way to get this film. I mean, forget the Blu-ray. Uh, unless the, until the Blu-ray comes with this, with no special features, you can forget. Uh, there's another commentary with uh, Wes Craven and Peter Locke. Wes Craven's a guy that you can actually listen to talk forever because he's really that interesting to talk to. Uh, there's an hour-long look documentary, basically talking about the movie. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's engaging. There's an, also an hour-long retrospective on the entire career of Wes Craven up to this point, and it is really, really, really good. There's, you know, alternate ending and all that stuff, but those two first things that I just mentioned are worth owning this for alone. And even if The Hills of Oz wasn't an incredible movie, which it really is, and Michael Berryman's a fantastic actor, this is a must. Another Don Coscarelli film, not a horror one, but one that I enjoyed, and uh, it's kind of got a poster with it. Beastmaster. Uh, they made a TV series out of it in the uh, in the 2000s, but I really like this one. There's a documentary on here. There's like audio commentary as well, and I just got to show you. This is kind of cool. They didn't do a lot of posters, but you know they did this every once in a while. And uh, the Beastmaster poster on the inside, the the writing in there. So I just love this edition. Great one to have. Next up. <sighs> Okay, let's do these next the ones that I've shown you recently. <clears throat> Prom Night, one of my favorite movies of all time, one of the original Anchor Bays, so old, one of the old, really older ones to the point where there was no like special features thing or anything like that. There was just widescreen presentation, theatrical trailer, that's what we got. Hope you like it. Early Anchor Bay stuff, like Faligar said, it almost looks like it could be a mirror. Stepford Wife's. Again, another defining film for me growing up. I remember watching this. It kind of scared me that the end of it, the ending scene. And but when I was I was a teenager, I got into the Stepford like kids, I was, like teenager ones a bit more, because uh, it came at around that time and like there were uh, kind of TV movies. It made me go back and uh, rewatch this and get a better uh, understanding and feel for it. Trilogy of Terror creeped me out when I was a kid. I was in love with pa Karen Black. Uh, I read an interview with her in Fangoria and. Uh, she was not as, as impressed and as proud of her horror movies as I was kind of hoping she would be, and it was kind of a heartbreaking. 
but you know she's an actress and uh, this is what she does this is her job so it's understandable that uh, she wants to be known for more than just uh, one or two roles but for me uh, she did a fantastic job I and mean, she was a true actress in this film she did many roles here and uh, I was extremely proud to say that I'd seen this movie and I knew uh, the work of Karen Black rest in peace Karen uh, picked up this one recently uh, one of my dad's one that my dad likes a lot because yeah, I know he has it and it's uh, Shatter uh, the Hammer Collection I'm a big fan of the Hammer films and uh, that is through my uh, through my father who grew up uh, gr loving and idolizing the Hammer films and he gave me the appreciation for Hammer that I have so it's really cool to have my first and only Hammer Collection DVD from uh, Anchor Bay Next up is Clockwise, a movie I know very little about. I know it came out in 1985. It stars John Cleese, uh, and uh, I want to see it. I love John Cleese. He's amazing. Stuart Gordon, Dreams in the Witch House. I really love the Masters of Horror series. I want all of these in the slipcover editions with the cards, and I want the limited edition di uh, like ones that were done, and the Blu-rays maybe down the road. It's one of those series that really meant a lot to me. It, I don't double dip on a lot, but this was a defining time in horror, and it deserves the uh, have a really good appreciation of it. Uh, this were the double features that they put out, the uh, feature list double features, so that people could actually just watch the you uh, get the films. Now these here, some of these are a lot more expensive. Like this one. Can, I don't know, run you maybe, maybe 20 or so. These, a lot of these double feature ones run you at 50 or so sometimes. Uh, kind of crazy prices, you know, they overinflate these things. But uh, my favorite one of all time is Instant on Not from Mountain Road by Joe Lansdale, uh, followed closely by the movie, by the, uh, by the one Pickup. And uh, Chocolate's on here as well. Not a, as big a fan of Chocolate, but it's a, it's a cool film. You know, like what they did with it, or what the, uh, what Mick Garris was trying. All right, let's go to the box that's before I finish up with my DVDs. So I want to leave those for last. Everybody's got it in one edition or another, and you know you had to go and buy it. I have the Blu-ray of this as well, a Steelbook Blu-ray, actually, Anchor, Anchor Bay Blu-ray of it. Uh, but this is the ultimate edition still for this movie. There's no better edition, in my opinion, for this one right here, and it is the three-disc Evil Dead Ultimate Edition. Belongs in every serious horror collector's um, collection. It's fantastic. Uh, the third disc, Ladies of the Evil Dead, is amazing. I've like, I remember after I got it, I watched it like three or four times, almost in a row. I'm a big feature fan. I wish I had both of these now. Uh, the store that I bought this at, the, their, the whole chain closed down, CD Plus, and they had a lot of really good stuff. They always had different, unique genre stuff. And usually you'd go in and there'd be an end cap with like Blue Underground or Anchor Bay, and they had more than uh, you can imagine. And unfortunately, there's no store aside from H&V, which can be overpriced, that has that stuff right now. But, uh... Not even. Yeah. And, uh, we... I picked this up on, uh, Unboxing Day. It was on sale. For an amazingly good price. And my better half had the sec... the other... the first volume in her hand. She said, why don't you buy both of them? And you got them all. And I was like, I'll come back and get it after. I bought a lot already in Boxing Day. So, you know, I'll come back and get it. I came back and the store was closing out. And it was gone. And uh, I've always wanted the first one. Although I do want the movies in Blu-ray. And I do already have some of these doubled over in Blu-ray. Uh, I just want the collection. It's a really good Anchor Bay collection. That I think is one of the best things that they've ever put out. And it's the, uh, the Mario Battle Collection. This is volume two. It has uh, Lisa and the Devil and House of Exorcism as both versions of that film. And both are very different. Uh, Bay of Blood is on here, the classic. I have the, the uh, Blu-ray of that one. Uh, Bear and Blood, um, another classic one with Joseph Cotton, one of my favorites. Uh, Kidnapped is on here. I think, if I'm correct, they actually give you both versions of that film because there are different versions. Yeah. Kidnapped, Rabid Dogs. Uh... Do they have both versions? Hmm, I'm not sure if they do. 
Let's see. This presentation includes the finished version known as Kidnapped, featuring footage shot by a producer of Alfred Leone and Mario's son and longtime assistant Samir Lombardo Bava, as well as Rabid Dogs, Bava's original unfinished film. So yeah, it has both editions on there. I think uh, Logan Toxic actually has the uh, Blu-ray, the Arrow Blu-ray of this. Uh, Rod Colt and Winchester Jack, you know, like a western that he did. Five dollars for an August Moon. You know, I haven't watched that yet. I really should. It's a Jallo type one with a uh, Mary Babbitt that I haven't seen. And it's actually kind of like a sex comedy with uh, Brett Halsey uh, called Four Times a Night. Like a very tame type of comedy. Not as in like the stuff like nowadays. And it's just an incredible Babbitt collection. I really, one of these days, if I can ever find it at a good price, I have to get the other edition and complete my Anchor Bay Babbitt collection. Because you really did a great job with these. And uh, you can see the discs and the art on the inside. It's just amazing. Uh, there's them in the slim cases. A lot of them had some great features in there. You know, there's a lot of Tim Lucas commentaries. Because Tim Lucas is, of course, the uh, expert when it comes to Mario Bava. And he's the guy you go to. You want to listen to commentaries on. And just eight films on Mario Bava. You can't go wrong with that. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine if you include the other version of the kidnapped, so pretty cool. Uh, I remember when I bought this one. I was in uh, Cornerbrook, and they uh, had this amazing like display of Halloween films. And it was the best display I'd seen until this year, actually, when I went to to uh, the, uh, the Walmart, and they had just like incredible stuff this year as well. Uh, more stuff than I could imagine getting, and uh, though I did get an incredible amount, and I'm very pleased about everything I got this year uh, for Halloween. Probably one of my better years, but uh, this one here, and it's hard to beat this one. Once you get something like this for like a really good price on a Halloween display, how do you top something like that unless it's something really new? But it's the ultimate edition evil, like down to the dead. I mean, it's got a comic book, it's got like four discs, you've got the U.S. theatrical cut of the film, you've got the European version, the one that was recut by uh, Dario with Goblin Music, you've got the extended edition of the film, you've got like documentaries on here, uh, there's a comic book in this, just, there's a, a map of Monroe Mall, it's just, it's really a hard edition to beat, and there's been some great Blu-ray editions of Down to the Dead, but nothing tops this. Don't worry, guys. We're almost done on this very long video. So if you guys have watched all this, thank you so much. Um, his name was Jason. Uh, two Disc Splatter Edition. I uh, love this one here. Is it the definitive documentary on Crystal Lake or the Jason Friday 13 films? No. I actually don't own that movie. It's called Crystal Lake Memories. It's on Blu-ray, and I really, really want it. But I don't have it. I'll get it one day. But I do enjoy this movie. It's cheesy. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's not the best documentary, but you know what's really good? The cutout interviews. Listening to Steve Dash talk about Warren Gillette and Part 2 is really good and really interesting. Because uh, obviously he was really upset to find out that he had made 90% of the film and Warren Gillette had been going around doing conventions <laughs> pretty much saying that he did it all and enjoying a, quite a profit off of Friday 13th Part 2 and yeah, he had his part in it but not as big as he pretended to have and Steve Dash was extremely upset and you get to hear about it probably for, the, for me it was the first time hearing about it on this and it was great uh, double features that I want to see the Screen Factory put out. I really, really do. Uh, two great films. The one by Rigorio De Dado and uh, great Italian, uh, great Italian, great uh, Australian one as well. Uh, Dead End Drive-In, fun film, kind of nihilistic, and a uh, cool cut and run, an actual uh, cool film by uh, Diodato, who did Cannibal Holocaust, which is not a favorite of mine. But I uh, love... Uh, the action in a uh, cut and run. This is a really cool box. 
and uh, not a lot of features, early release. Uh, very cool. So, Maximum Overdrive. Love the soundtrack in this. This should be a horrible movie, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, is it like completely well done? Is this plot all make sense? No, it doesn't, but it's a fun thrill ride with some great actors, an amazing soundtrack, and just turn your brain off and enjoy this. This is a hell of a lot of fun. Next up is a, is a rarity, and it's uh, otherwise known as Turkey Shoot, but it's Escape 2000. Yep, this is it. This is the uh, Iota Print Anchor Bay Edition with uh, all the features. It's, of course, is a famous uh, Australian exploitation movie. A lot of people know this from uh, watching uh, the uh, exploitation documentary, but uh, it's a great one. I, uh, there's a booklet in here. I got this off of a guy and I couldn't believe it. It was like, again, another collector that kept his stuff in mint condition. This, of course, is a very expensive one to buy. And I uh, love this case. One of the newer ones, I guess you could say it's kind of newer, but not newer now. It was newer back then. It was Behind the Mask, uh, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. There's like a slip for this, but I don't have it. Uh, some great stuff on here. Uh, cool film. Kind of... Very much in the line of uh, Man Bites Dog, uh, the French film. Of uh, basically, there's these guys going around with the camera, following the serial killer, and it's a uh, it's a fun film. I bought this one for very very cheap. I know very little about it, and I haven't watched. It. But one of these days I got to. But it's an original Anchor Bay one. Uh, but I think it's a TV movie or something like that. Uh, because you got Monica Kina, who was in, of course, Fred vs. Jason, and she was what I know her mostly from is uh, Dawson's Creek. Uh, we have uh, Tim Thomas and, of course, Trancers. I just a uh, movie called Left Left in Darkness. So if you guys know this movie, Stephen J. Canal, let me know. If it's any good? It's gonna be like a fun watch or what? But it's one that I had to have. It's original Anchor Bay. Uh, here's one I got from my dad. I'm a really big fan of like uh, kind of like sword and sorcery movies, as is my father. And this is kind of one of the really, really cheesy ones. Uh, starred Lee Horsley, who uh, acted in a series of detective show. He used to like called Matt Houston. Uh, loved the show. That was really in love with the girl that was in it. And actually, it's Simon McCorkendale, who played in a well. He was Animal. It was it was Manimal, the, uh, the short-lived series. Uh, check it out. It's very cool. Uh, really bad. And <laughs> Richard Lynch. Uh, just a bunch of really cool actors in this one here. Uh, I could go on and on with the acting. This Richard Mole. There's a bunch of people. It's uh, Sword and the Sorcerer. Just love this. Don't you just love this artwork? I mean, I swear, um, my friend had this thing, I think, that said, these movies were made and sequels were made of movies like this to pay for the artwork for the last box cover. Uh, the last, but not least, is a Jello Collection one. It's the only Jello Collection one I got. They did a few of these, but uh, the one I have is the... Uh, Anthony Escott directed Case of the Bloody Iris. This is Yellow Collection. Uh, I love this, the way it's done. It's incredible. Uh, I have no idea what it's saying there. It's in uh, Italian, but... Uh, cool. I have no. I have this in another edition, uh, basically a cheaper edition, uh, when they're like a box set type thing. But uh, there's an alternate stabbing scene. i got to rewatch this one. And uh, I don't know, it's better. George Hilton's in this one. Edwidge Finnett, who's the ultimate, like, uh, her and Susie Kendall are the two ultimate, like, girls for these type of films. Case of Bloody Iris. So there we go. That's my entire Anchor Bay collection. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And with, at 53 minutes, hope you guys managed to last through all that. Thanks for watching. Really seriously, it's time for tea because my voice is going. Uh, let me know what Anchor Bay you got or which ones you're looking for. And uh, who knows, maybe a... Uh, You'll tell me about some stuff that I really don't know about. But that's my small, modest Anchor Bay collection. Uh, I used to have a much bigger collection than that. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, after 54 minutes, it's really time for tea. Thanks a lot.